Ladies and gentlemen, members of the jury, members of the Roll the Tape film crew. Um, I'm a little disappointed, personally speaking, because I have a great deal of respect for Danny Garcia. All of you know at this point uh, that Danny Garcia does a great job representing my hometown, the great city of Philadelphia, Philly. You all know that I know Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia is a good man, personally speaking. Um, Danny has done so many people really good. He gives back to the community. Um, he even done a favor for me, um, a personal favor um, for me. Um, about a year ago, um, me and Danny busted up every time I see him. He's just a good person. He's a good human being. Um, I'm disappointed, personally speaking, but this is not personal, nor is it about me. With that being said, Danny Garcia did something that I thought thought he would never do, uh, that I thought his dad, Angel, his brother, um, and his corner in general would never do. And that's quit, period. Um, but this is boxing, and we got to deal with what's real. This fight between Danny Garcia and Ares Landy Lara um, was lackluster overall. Um, wasn't a lot of activity. I thought that this was a great stylistic matchup considering the fact that uh, Ares Landy Lara is coming off of his third consecutive win by knockout going into this fight. But also because Danny Garcia put on a clinic in his last fight. However, Danny Garcia was coming off of a very long layoff, especially compared to um, Ares Landy Lara. This fight have been in the works for over a year and a half. Um, and it finally materialized for a world title, by the way. Um, I was expecting a little bit more activity from Danny, but I know coming off of a long layoff, it is tough for a professional boxer. Um, of course, Danny is, what, 36? And Ares Landy is 41 years of age. The thing that people need to realize is when you got two veteran fighters, two legends in the sport, two very accomplished, decorated amateurs and world champions in this sport, when they're on the backside of their careers, these type of fights look the way that this fight looked. And it's okay. But at the same time, when we look at the magnitude of this card, because it was a stacked card from the opening bell on the preliminaries all the way up until the main event through the televised broadcast, through the pay-per-view stream. Um, Danny Garcia got knocked down, something we have never seen happen to Danny in any of his professional fights, not one. And he's been in there with some heavy hitting punchers. He's been in there with some opponents that just have outright natural power. Okay. Let's just, let's just put that out there. And he has taken a lot of punches in fights where he should have gotten knocked down then against those opponents. But then again, when you get older in this business, 
When you get older in this sport, your chin gets softer. In other words, is the ability to absorb punches uh, don't come as easy as it did as a professional fighter when you first start coming into the ranking system. Danny Garcia always had a heck of a chin. Um, but with his age and his um, inactivity, could have played a role in him getting knocked down for the first time in his career. Technically speaking, against a southpaw, as an orthodox boxer, you never want to move to your right as an orthodox fighter because you're moving towards the straight left hand of a, a southpaw, which we know Ares Landy Lera is a southpaw. Danny um, was moving on the balls of his feet to the left, which is closer to the right of Ares Landy Lera. Then he immediately shifted to his right, and that's how he landed right in the sights of Ares Landy Lera's straight left hand. The money punch for southpaws. Um, it looked like it was a maybe a two or three second delay with his equilibrium, and then he fell to one knee. He looked like he was okay when he got up, when he walked back to the corner. But somehow, some way, I um, noticed that Angel asked Danny a question. Uh, but whatever the case might have been, Angel Garcia, the father and trainer of Danny, basically said to the referee, it's over. And the referee called this bout. And um, I don't know what Danny was thinking. I don't know what his team was thinking. I don't know what his dad was thinking. Maybe they felt the writing was on the wall because we were in the later rounds in this fight. Uh, we only had about two or three more rounds as fans to, you know, enjoy this fight um, as long as it lasted or even watch it if some of us didn't enjoy it. But the bottom line is um, I don't think that the corner was comfortable enough to come out without being able to um, win this fight because, I mean, obviously speaking, Danny Garcia was down on all three of the judges' scorecards. Uh, but needless to say, um, he got knocked down in this fight. I do believe that he definitely has some decisions that he needs to make of whether or not he's going to continue in his career. I believe that Danny Garcia has done enough in this sport. He has accomplished enough in this sport inside and outside of the ring to be considered a Hall of Famer. He's a legend. He's a decorated amateur. He's a multiple world champion and multiple weight classes. And just those facts alone, to me, are enough to be considered as a Hall of Famer when his career is officially over. He's done a heck of a job um, in this sport. He's made a lot of great money. He was fortunate and blessed and is fortunate and blessed to have made a lot of investments outside of the sport of boxing and also uh, be a blessing to other people. Um, he's a father and a good man, and he has nothing else to prove in this business. Uh, so with that being said, I would not be disappointed if Danny Garcia decide to retire. But even if he doesn't, um, he's a great ticket seller. So he's always going to be a promoter's dream, especially on the backside of his career. Um, we wish Danny Garcia well. Here in Philly, we love Danny Garcia. I know him. Um, I know his father. Great people. But this is a, a hurt business. The hurt business. And uh, fighters get hurt a lot. I don't think Danny was hurt physically, but I don't know. Maybe he was hurt. Maybe that punch really hurt him. Uh, but needless to say, we tip our hat off here for Danny Garcia. 
Um, and he done a great job in his career, coming from where he came from and getting it from the mud. Much respect. And then I'm going to leave y'all with this. I'm just trying to figure out one thing. I just have a question. I know nobody else will ask this, uh, but so I will. I'll be the bad guy. Where did Eris Landy Lever get all his power from? I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to be smart. I mean, his last three fights, he did end them in knockout fashion. And now this fight last night, which was his fourth consecutive fight, ended in TKO and or knockout fashion. At 41 years old. I mean, we've we've been watching Eris Landy for years, me over a decade, and I haven't seen all of this power. We need answers.